Good day, everyone. Cody here at Clinton Rides Electric Bike and Skate Shop Review Channel. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different and review a bike that I do not sell. So a gentleman brought his e-bike in. I should say at the onset, we do not service bikes that we do not sell. However, this gentleman had a uh, mechanical issue with his e-bike, not an uh, e problem with his e-bike, and he was in a bind. It wasn't a big deal to address, so we addressed it. But in that process, we were able to get a look at a product that we don't sell, but I'm thinking we're going to take on because it has some cool features. So it's the Juiced Bike, Juiced E-Bike, the Scrambler 750 watt. It also comes in a thousand watt iteration now. Scrambler. So let's do it. Don't click away. Breaking news. I actually edited this video. I forgot to put it in the last one. All my e-bikes are 30% off. Yeah, that's right. 30% off. 2024 federal tax credit, 30% off of your e-bike. There are restrictions on the dollar amounts up to 900 bucks. You get about a $3,000 e-bike, which is top of the end, top, top of the end, top of the line. And if you live in the state of New Jersey, sales and use tax is suspended for e-bike purchases this year. I don't know how long the program is going on for, but 2024, if you're in the state of New Jersey, that's your city, 36.625% on your e-bike. Over a third. That's crazy. So <laughs> you had to throw that in there. Imagine there being a legit 36.625% off sale at a car dealership. So if there was ever a time to entertain purchasing an e-bike, now's the moment. Back to the video. Thank you for this interlude. Interlude? Uh, inter interruption, really. Now, this will really be an unbiased review because at present, I don't sell the thing. So I don't care if you buy it at all. Uh, that said, it was pretty pretty cool, but we'll, we'll dig into it. But a pure unbiased review. And this one is the only review where it's fundamentally unbiased because you cannot get it from me. So you can definitely take my, uh, my words without a grain of salt, salt. I also noticed I need a haircut. Shout out to my wife. We own Addison Lee hair studio here in Clinton. And this is like the adage, the plumber who can't, who's the plumber's wife who cannot get their leaky faucet fixed. I am the hair salon's husband who cannot get his hair cut. So annually, I will just shave my head and protest. We are rapidly approaching that moment. All right, that was pointless. Let's move on. All right, so here's the in-store walk around. Uh, <clears throat> the juiced bikes are pretty simple. Increasingly, I like the fact that the displays are simple, but not for the reason you might imagine. Initially, I would say I like these interfaces that are simple because when you're riding, you don't want a lot of complexity. That's one reason. Another reason, a new reason that I like it is now having sold a bunch of bikes, they come back with the displays broken for various reasons. Main one reason, one main reason being it's a bike and you're riding it and bikes fall down. So if you have this fragile display, not this one, but if you have a display that's iPhone esque and has like a vibrant LED display and you drop it, it's going to shatter. So we have the ability to fix that. It's less likely to happen to a small, compact, kind of rubberized and rubber coated display. When I say rubber coated, I mean, it's like encased in, in some kind of a rubber like edifice. I don't know if that's the appropriate word, but I like that. I like that in general. I would also like it if the e-bike brands writ large would just wrap those displays in a more robust and durable architecture. <laughs> I'm just making up words left and right because they are definitely prone to break. Methinks it might be the manufacturer to the manufacturer's benefit to be replacing those displays left and right because they're not they're not cheap and they're easy to break. So be mindful. So I tell all my customers, strap this thing in as much as you can. We don't want a lot of plumage with the cables. We also don't want to do it so tight that we restrict the brake articulation. The bottom line is protect your display and be mindful of your display, which in this case, it's kind of kind of secured in there nicely. So here's the part where we take it around the shop block. 
I haven't posted a review in a little over two weeks, and I will tell you why. We're trying to upscale these and make them better than this grade of review, and we are. We got a drone. We got a drone that's going to follow me. I got the meta sunglasses that can record all that live footage. So this will hopefully be our last display, display, our last review of this format. And it seemed fitting that it was for a bike that I don't explicitly sell. Oh, I'm sure I can open up an account with them if you really want to use them. Um, look for new, cooler reviews, which I don't know. Some people dig the simplicity of the reviews. <laughs> Obviously, I like the simplicity of the reviews. But we're not talking about the bike. We're talking about me for 48 seconds. Okay, so this jammy comes with a 750-watt motor. Now they have a 1,000-watt motor option since this uh, bike has come into production. It still has a super bright headlight. Now it has the upgraded uh, G2 52-volt. And those certifications, the UL2271, I believe they are a byproduct of the e-bike fires that are happening in New York City. Know that those e-bike fires are largely from folks tinkering with the internals of the e-bike and not a fault of the manufacturer. Wildly overblown. Your e-bike is not going to catch fire unless you do extremely irrational things to them. The main one being, don't crack them open, okay? There's not an omelet inside there. Do not open your e-bike case. If you have a problem, take it to a professional, hopefully the shop that you purchased it at, and they'll be able to address it. I implore you, do not break open the internal of your e-bike battery to try and diagnose it. Therein lies the recipe for trouble. Um, this is also a type of e-bike that I'm increasingly seeing and selling. When I see, when I say that, I mean the, the concept of a bike that is not meant to be pedaled. This is a moped analog. We got pedals, derailleur, crankshafts all just slapped on there. So it's a bike in the eyes of the law, but you're riding it as a moped. If you have to pedal this thing, something's gone wrong and you're having, when I say something gone wrong, I mean the battery's probably dead and now you're just pedaling around a super heavy, like 83, some odd pound, some odd pound bike. Oh, you should have some water here. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep reviewing to power through. Um, so yeah, the, the ride was good. It was zippy. I'm sure the thousand watt does a great deal more for it being 25% stronger. Here's a small tidbit of information. In the state of New Jersey, 750 watt and below with pedals or the ability to pedal means that you do not need a license, a registration, an insurance. You do not need a class M motorcycle moped endorsement on your driver's license. It's just a bike. Once you get into the thousand or 750, but so it's 750 plus like the alligator. So anything that's above 750, even if it does have a crankshaft in the eyes of the law, now it's a moped. So make that consideration. I know it's very easy to get around, to get around the law because there's a complete dearth of information about what that person is riding at that particular moment. Now it's easier and I don't want to at all encourage evading the law, but it is, it is just easier to blend into a crowd. If you're riding on an e-bike that you can switch classes and go up to class three, which makes it a moped or a motorcycle really in the eyes of the law, I guess more a moped. So if you're riding something that looks like this, you're more likely to get pulled over. Whereas if you're just riding a traditionally shaped bike, that has the ability to go between class two and class three, you're less likely to get pulled over. So this is a emerging problem. In the past three months even, I've seen a lot of my manufacturers jump up to the thousand watt solution. And I've ridden on some bikes that I think that the power of the motor is not commensurate with the frame that is attaching it. Oh. If you watch my channel, you know, I like car analogies. It's like shoving, you know, a Porsche engine into a Pinto in a lot of these. So I think it's cool that they're, they're powering up these things, but I think the frame and the structure of the bike has to be aligned with that upgrade in horsepower. So if I'm correct, one horsepower is 750 Watts. 
correct me if I'm wrong. The pros are pretty straightforward on this one. This is a this is a moped get around. It's like allowing you to do most of the things that you would do on a moped, get up to 28 miles per hour, which means that on your average residential street and your typical community, at least in the state of New Jersey, the speed limit is 25 miles per hour in like a reasonably congested area. You can get around town and get a lot done. It's a two passenger bike. Technically, if you'll notice, there's pegs right down by the rear hub motor. They're red, red with like white stripes. So you can have two people on it. It's definitely going to be sluggish. But I love the idea of bikes as utility. E-bikes is a way to get rid of a second car. E-bikes is a way to reduce your carbon footprint. If that's even a real thing. Uh, I hate getting political in nature. I don't know. It's obviously better. All right, let's be more practical about it. It costs the national average to charge an e-bike from empty to full is six cents. I think the national average to fill a gas tank is something like $58 at the moment. So right there, I mean, the, the ROI on your bike, I, this bike is retailing right now for, I believe, $1,600. No license no registration, no insurance, no tags, no dealership fees. Take all those fees away. I bet you just the sales tax on an e-bike right now, I'm sorry, the sales tax on a car right now would be, it definitely is going to be larger than the entire cost of this entire e-bike that you never have to have any interaction with the government with and get to just ride around and get stuff done for way less money and way less ongoing, you know, registration renewal, insurance renewal, all that good stuff. So this is that type of a bike. Um, so yeah, that's it. <laughs> this is, <laughs> given the fact that I don't sell it again, I'm kind of speaking more broadly about this type of bike, this, this moped style bike, which I kid you not the day that I got the, Oh, by the way, I'm a rad power dealer. Now the day that I got my rads in, I had multiple models that had this the shape, uh, the Rad Runner Plus, gone. The day the day I took it out of the box, gone. Um, okay, I'm rambling. All right, the cons. Without getting into the, yeah, well, why we're reviewing it. Let's get into it. We're gonna assume that if you buy this bike, the primary drivers behind it are not fitness. They may be adventure. They should be mainly transportation. So I had a gentleman buy a analog of this bike from a different manufacturer, and he was using it as though it was a Suron or a Talaria. These machines are not built to deal with those type of conditions. It's a beautiful picture, right? It's in a pasture somewhere giving the uh, the idea, the inclination that it has the ability to do crazy trail riding. It does not. It is not meant for that. The frame is not meant for it. The shocks are not meant for it. This is not an electric dirt bike. It is an electric bike. So please just bear in mind those limitations. So let's take that legal distinction out of it between the 750 watt and above. Just the components versus the price if you're spending under two thousand dollars regardless of how many watts the motor is able to output for two thousand bucks there's just no way for them to install not install but furnish the bike with the appropriate shocks suspension and all these second and third orders of performance that should be installed on something that's going to handle like deep depressions into rock faces or what you would count, what you would encounter in a prolonged high stress on the bike, electric mountain biking situation. Like even hunters, hunters love to use these type of bikes because of the utility, but you can't ride it like it's a dirt bike. The good news is hunters usually want to be quiet. And that's why they get an electric mountain bike or electric mountain moped. So you can, you know, um, creep up on your prey more quietly. So those are the 
those are the cons. Don't use it that way. Bottom line. So when I speak about the bottom line, I'm not going to talk about juiced bike in particular, even though we're reviewing it. There's nothing wrong or right with juiced bikes. I will actually say it felt very nimble. So this was a 750 watt motor. Now it comes in a thousand still felt quite zippy, more maneuverable than the current version of this that I sell. So I sell two iterations of this concept. I sell the rad runner plus, which is actually arguably a three seater because the front seat you can, you can position up or down. Whereas the bench seat that behind that is behind it has pegs and you're not fitting three humans on it comfortably, but conceptually you could. My point is nobody's buying these to get exercise. So if you want something that has pure utility, I would recommend the rad runner plus, which has that like deep two seat bench and adjustable front seat, as well as the go bike juntos, which is nearly identical to this in both cost and concept. And it's a, it's not a little bit bigger. It's bigger. It's bigger. So the fact that it's bigger means that it's going to be a, a bit, bit more sluggish, but that's all right. You shouldn't be taking this thing anywhere outside of paved residential streets. These aren't electric mountain bikes just because they have this aesthetic or this design does not mean that they are Surons or Talarias or any version brand name of electric mountain bikes. Um, they're not, they're mopeds. You wouldn't take your moped mountain biking, right? Okay. So treat it like that. So that's my bottom line. And I did like the juiced bike. So if you folks have any interest in me taking them on, please let me know. Always happy to entertain a new manufacturer. I like the fact that I got to give it a test ride because it was nimble. Good. I believe it was a buffet motor. So that's great. Yeah. So good stuff. Um, can't sell it to you right now. Depending on the reaction to this video, check back in with me. All right. Thank you for looking at this review. Let's move on to the next slide. And this slide is totally inaccurate. We do typically only sell the bikes that we review and review the bikes that we sell. Did I say that backwards? This review is a disaster. Um, but the rest, remest, the roof. I'm going to leave this in. The rest remains true. If you order from us anywhere in the contiguous United States, we can ship it to you or we can ship it to your local bike shop, which is actually I'm, I'm finding to be a more common occurrence than folks taking it themselves. I highly recommend this. The conceit that you are able to ride a bike in no way comports with the idea that you should be able to assemble a bike and that you're somehow now a bike mechanic. Putting an e-bike together is increasingly difficult. And it was difficult to begin with as they add features, functionality. Uh, some of these bikes have turn signals now. There's, there's all these things that have to be assembled. I recommend that you send it to a bike shop. I also have some handy customers that are totally comfortable doing this. So that's, that's great. You save some money, you know, not having to pay an e-bike store in wherever to assemble it. But if you do business with me locally, I take the freight, I take the assemb I do the assembly all free of charge. You're walking out with a fully functional assembled tested e-bike. And if you're not in my area, I'll source a bike shop that's local to you. I'll have a conversation with the owner or the salesman or the service staff there, make sure they're comfortable with it, provide them with all the supporting information that will give them the full understanding of how to put it together. If they're bike mechanics, they already know this. Everything that's happening during the assembly is mechanically inclined. They're not messing around with motherboards here. So the electronic, the electrical components they're all done. That's what the, the cake's already baked when it gets there. So they're just assembling the mechanical parts of the bike. So if you do want to buy a bike for me, please visit our web shop, www.clintonrides.com. Uh, one quick thing I want to touch on. There has been an increasing request for customizations that are not available from the manufacturer. I am able to make that happen. 
I have relationships with my sales rep. It's oof. do I have to redo it? I'm going to keep going. I have relationships with my multiple sales reps, at my respective manufacturers and brands. So if you see a bike online that you like, but you don't want the handlebars that come with it, or you want to swap out the seats or whatever, I can have that conversation all the way upstream to make sure that it ships as a complete to your local bike store. And that's a feature that's not available if you're doing the direct to consumer model. And the direct to consumer model, I think is, is failing. Either e-bikes are just going to fail flat out because of this horrible thing. I have people calling me all the time who purchased an e-bike online and they have trouble and they have no recourse. There's nobody to deal with. There's nobody to yell at. What are you buying if you're buying a bike from me? You're buying it for the same price, right? So we're, we're already priced flat. What are you really buying? You're buying recourse. You're buying the ability to call me and yell at me if something is wrong. And I am compelled to act on that because you are my customer and I must do so. And I will do so. It's a guarantee. There's just, it's not going to happen. You're not going to leave unsatisfied. So my point is, if you're considering buying an e-bike, either buy it from me or just buy it from a local e-bike store. You want a place that you can get ongoing service. So many customers out there are just getting fully lampooned. You get a hundred pound box, shows up via FedEx freight on your door. Most people can't even carry them in, let alone assemble them. Don't bite off more than you can chew. You don't need to. I'm here to help with that problem. Thank you very much. Another long ramble. <laughs> Sorry. All right. We'll close it out as always with a like, subscribe, and share. Please visit my web stop. Shop www.clintonrides.com. I don't know what's wrong. I feel fine. It's like I'm having mini strokes or something today. It's actually, it's really hot out. I think that's what it is. It's like crazy hot. It's like eighty percent humidity outside, and it's like ninety four degrees. Thank you for watching my video. Look for our next one. We got the drone. We got the glasses. We got the chest mount camera. So we're trying to get, trying to up our game. Hopefully they're better. Some folks like the simplicity of this. Uh, I like the simplicity of this. I appreciate you watching the review. I am always long-winded. And this time I flubbed my words so much, it's embarrassing. And I'm not going to edit it. Have a great one, folks. Cody at Clinton Rides. Be good.